And so here we are with Nathan Bird, the founder of the Chattanooga Civics website and podcast. Uh, and uh, Nathan is married and now with two children. Is that correct? Yeah. And a uh, young family uh, uh, alive in the Lord and alive in the faith. Um, so we're grateful for having you on this uh, interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're the founder of the Chattanooga Civics website and podcast. Can you tell us a little bit, little bit more about that? Yeah, so when my wife and I moved back to Chattanooga about three years ago, we were in Nashville for a time and, and we knew we wanted to build a home here and really like put down roots in Chattanooga. And part of that in my mind was really getting involved in local politics. And, and when I first came back to town, my, my only real goal was to be informed enough to know how to vote and to know like what the city government does. I was really just looking for my own education. And in looking for those resources for my own education, I found that the resources were very much lacking. Um, there was, you know, the Times Free Press does a good job of covering the news. They are a newspaper. And so they're always covering the latest, you know, latest problems, latest debates. But there is a lack of core fundamental civic education in terms of what does the city council do? What does the mayor do? What are the ongoing issues that we are talking about? Not just in a, in a, you know, he said, she said kind of city council debate, like the Times Free Press covers, but like, what are the core issues and, and how do we understand them? And so I saw this, this lack of resources and for a while, I just kind of thought, oh, it'd be cool if there was a podcast or a blog, maybe somebody else would do that someday and just kind of forgot about it for a while. And then over the summer of 2020, we had discussions about the mask mandates. We had discussions about institutional racism and police brutality. And we were having all these national conversations about what seemed to be, the way we were talking about them, they seemed to be national issues. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized the mask mandates, they're handled by the Hamilton County Health Department. Policing, that's all handled by the police chief who's nominated by the mayor and approved by the city council. So these are all very, local issues at their core. And so the events of this summer really kind of spurred me on to realize this is really important. I can't just wait around for somebody else to do this project. Uh, I've been doing my own research, trying to educate myself. So I'm just going to share what I have learned with others. And I chose a podcast because for a couple of reasons, uh, podcasts are really popular among my age group. And my age group is typically not very involved in local politics. <clears throat> local politics very much skews towards the older generations. So I figured a podcast would be a good way to get more people in my age range involved. Uh, and there's also just a very low barrier to entry. You know, there's, it's, it's a really good way to, to sit down, you know, you're doing the dishes, you don't have to be reading something like a blog, you just put your headphones in, you do the dishes, doing your chores, and you can listen. And it's really easy to set up a podcast too. I mean, it's, it took me 30 minutes to, to get signed up. So that's why I chose the podcast format. I started the website a little bit later just to kind of aggregate some of this information. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, you know, still very much a work in progress. It's still evolving. Um, but the, the long-term plan is to do small explainer episodes about different issues in city government interspersed with uh, interviews with electoral candidates. So most recently, I just finished up doing about 20 interviews with city council and mayoral candidates. And I have a couple more follow-up interviews with mayoral candidates before the run. Awesome, awesome. So uh, it's a great explanation of, of what you're doing. Um, let's talk about your inspiration for this, because like you said, not everybody is interested in local politics. Uh, and that's a curious thing. You know, the turnout for national uh, elections is huge, but then the turnout for uh, the person that probably has more impact over your life than, than the president, you know, your local council member or your the, the mayor uh, of the city, uh, nobody comes out to elect those people. Uh, so th that first of all, that there's a problem with a lack of emphasis on that. And what inspired you to be interested in local politics? And does your faith have anything to do with that? Yeah, so this project was actually very directly born out of the desire to live out the Catholic teaching of subsidiarity. Uh, like I said, when we moved here, we knew we wanted to put down roots. I, I had already read a lot about subsidiarity and really kind of internalized it, knew it was an important aspect of our faith. Um, 
Can right. you define subsidiarity? Yeah. So, so the the catechism, I believe it's the catechism. Yeah. Paragraph eighteen eighty three of the catechism says, uh, subsidiarity is a principle according to which a community of a higher order should not interfere in the internal life of a community of a lower order, depriving the latter of its functions, but rather should support it in case of need and help to coordinate its activity with the activities of the rest of society always with a view to the common good. And so when I started reading about this, I found that in American Catholic discourse, uh, subsidiarity usually gets confused with federalism or even libertarianism. And I feel like federalism puts way too much emphasis on the states and ignores the kind of lower levels. And then libertarianism puts far too much emphasis on the individual and ignores the ways that we can work together towards the common good. And so part of that statement from the catechism says, you know, we should always be coordinating our activities with the rest of society with a view to the common good. So subsidiarity really is a great expression of the both and of Catholicism that we hear a lot about. It recognizes the importance of each level of society, big and small, and it puts them all in their proper place and encourages us all to engage in self-reflection about what our proper role in society is. So it encourages the individual not to become too atomized, and it encourages the higher levels of government not to get too involved in lower levels than they need to be. You know, it encourages all, us all to really reflect on, on what our role is in society. Yeah, it sounds like a very Catholic principle of both and, uh, yeah. you know, that it, it incorporates a, a both and approach. And it's also a very balanced approach, uh, virtus in medio stat. In the Aristotelian mean, like virtue stands in the, in the middle between two extremes. Um, so you mentioned subsidiarity uh, as a uh, standard principle for uh, the Catholic social teaching, but there's also the, the principle of participation in public life. Has that played a part in what your, uh, your project? Um, not explicitly, at least not from a I've never thought of it in those terms. You are right. That is an explicit teaching of, of the faith. Um, I've just always grown up interested in different levels of politics. And so for me, that, that always came naturally. So I didn't really have to think about it through the lens of like, what does the church teach on participation? Because that's just something that I was already interested in. Uh, but it does fit in with that. And, you know, as we're talking to other parishioners and other, other Catholics about why they should be interested, that will definitely play a role in terms of, you know, even if this is not something like me where I'm, you know, this big nerd trying to figure out what's happening in local politics, if that doesn't come naturally to you, you know, understand that the church does encourage us to be actively participating in our civic life. Excellent, excellent. Um, so what are some of the upcoming things that people who hear this interview might be interested in, in the local level, on the local level of politics? So the most immediate thing is there is a runoff for the mayor's seat, as well as the council seats in District 2 and District 5. And that is going to be on April 13th. And uh, early voting is going to be starting in a week, I believe. Uh, so that is the most immediate thing. Um, and I have interviews with most of those candidates on my podcast and on my website. Um, and we're doing this interview on, on St. Patrick's Day, so 317. Yeah. So when he says a week Agreed. from now, uh, it, it, this interview probably will be the, the following weekend after a week from now. <laughs> so early voting will probably have already started. Yeah. Um, the runoff is between Tim Kelly and Kim White are running for mayor. And then in District 2, it's between Jenny Hill and Thomas Lee. And then in District 5, it's between Dennis Clark and Isaiah Hester. And so I was not able to interview Isaiah Hester. He, I just couldn't fit him into the schedule. But I have interviews with all those other candidates available on the website for people to get involved and say, the mayor does a lot. Your city council person does a lot. It's important to go vote for these positions because they have a very direct impact on how our city operates day to day. Uh, you know, like you said, much more on a day to day level, they have a lot more impact than the president or your congressman. Um, so I really encourage people to get active and, and educate themselves on this runoff and go vote on April 13th. Well, where can people go to educate themselves about the important issues for our community? 
there are several dis different resources. Uh, I have tried to aggregate as many as possible on my own website, which is chattanoogacivics.com. Well, let's look at your website then uh, while you mentioned that. Uh, chattanoogacivics.com is the, is the website, right? That's it. Uh, and you have on there a lot of resources, including a, a podcast, your podcast that we were talking about. Yeah, so the homepage will take you to most of the major podcast apps, as well as my social media page. Uh, if you want to email me, if you're feeling very generous and want to donate to support the project, it's really a labor of love on my part that I do accept donations. Um, that's just kind of my introductory paragraph as to why I started the project. And then at the top, you can see the tabs for the mayor's race, the city council race. So you link directly to their websites? I link to their websites, and then that is my interview that I have done with them, is what you'll find on that page. Awesome. And then you, obviously this is a runoff situation, but you had done the interviews with all these other uh, candidates. Yes, I did as many as I could. Okay. And then the city council race, uh, we also have the, the same thing. Uh, find your district. I think that's a great resource because most people don't know what district they live in. So I'm just going to click yeah. on it while we're doing this little interview. How about that? So here we are. Uh, we're downtown. I think we're in this district eight. Let me just yeah, I believe the, the Basilica is on the far western edge of district eight, that piece that right. kind of juts out into district seven. Yeah, this part, this part right here. Yeah. So, so that's really cool to see that and to see who's in the city. So I noticed this little pocket Red Bank is not in there. I know I've heard people say that, oh, I live in Red Bank. I can't vote in those elections. Or East Ridge, they're incorporated cities that are not part of the city of Chattanooga. Yes, and actually, if you see that little uh, island in District 9 as well, there's a tiny little community called Ridgeside that incorporated back in the early 1900s and has remained independent this entire time. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. It is fascinating. It's really interesting looking at how the city has kind of grown. Yeah. And um, then the other resources tab is where up at the top right, that's where I link to um, registration to vote. Uh, there's a great website where somebody on online basically broke down all of the financial disclosures of all the mayoral candidates and put them in a very easy to read format. He did a great job. I still don't know who this guy is. He was, he's on Reddit. And so I, I just know him by his username. Um, but he, he put together this great website about finances. Uh, the Camp House does a great podcast. They've interviewed a lot of the candidates, uh, some other resources, voter guides, uh, Times Free Press and WRCB did candidate interviews. So there's a lot of resources that I've, I've tried to compile. Uh, if you want to look beyond what, what I'm providing. I really want to try and provide a, a well-balanced, well-rounded look at these candidates and at these issues. I don't want to be the only voice uh, talking about these things. Well, it sounds like you've put together a, a great resource to help people go through the door and explore these issues that affect us. And then that, that faithful people uh, who are, who are faith-based are, 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 should be interested in this because we're called to participate in the life of society. And we're supposed to respect that principle of subsidiarity, uh, as you mentioned, that, that, that says that things that happen on the local level are very important for us uh, for, to be attentive to so that um, we're not just focused on uh, huge, huge issues uh, from people far away or just get insulated in our own island unto ourselves, but that we're truly part of a community. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for taking the time to, to tell us about this awesome project that you got going. Uh, we'll pray for its success and um, I hope to spread the word so that everybody can be informed uh, about the things going on in Chattanooga. Thank you for having me. It's been great. All right. God bless.